12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is August 11th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Actually, right now outside, not too bad. If it could just stay like this all day, we'd be in good shape. You're going to be shocked to hear from Justin Horn that temperatures have been running above average lately. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're all shocked. Uh, so very hot yesterday again. Uh, here's the record that I think really kind of jumps off the page. Yesterday was our seventh day in a row of record highs. Pretty incredible. Uh, today can make it eight. Let me show you the month uh, in calendar form here. 106 yesterday, 106 the day before, 105, three days before that. But yes, yeah, seven record highs in a row. The hottest being 106. Uh, we've had 45 100 degree days now. We're running about five and a half degrees above average in the month of August. All of these numbers pretty incredible and I think we're going to be right back there again today. We are forecasting 106 uh, this afternoon. I'm sorry to say uh, as we go outside for you. We've got mostly cloudy skies. Some morning clouds have moved in briefly. 85 in New Braunfels already feels like 94 already feels like 93 in Seguin feels like 82 right now in Curvo and you factor in the humidity, which is still fairly high, but it comes down later today. And as we look at the highs across the state, it's not just us. You can see why ERCOT's a little concerned because just about every city in Texas is going to see temperatures at 100 or above. And that includes even on, up into Amarillo where they're forecasting a high of 102. Okay, we need some good news. I've got some positive news to share with you. I think you're going to like this as we get uh, later into the year. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. We get over to Stephen now, who I hope also has some positive news. Let's get a look here at 410 at Old Pearsall. This is actually a shot that we've had up from TransGuide since the early hours of GMSA. I mentioned it earlier. We have a, what appears to be a stalled mobile home. Check it out there. We actually have it there still in the same spot the grassy median. Now, when I talked to our friends at Transguide early this morning, they tell me this was not causing an issue for traffic, and that's still the case. It's off of the main lanes, but be on the lookout. We do know TxDOT is aware of the situation, so hopefully we'll see that home placed where it needs to be. But let's get you to our map. We do have some better news to report here. Although you see a lot of congestion along 35 southbound near Nogalitos, a crash caused that congestion. Looks like it's already cleared out, so we'll see that congestion reduced probably, probably within the next few minutes. That's just some residual traffic. Traffic. Not too far from there, we did have another crash reported along 37 northbound at I-10. That also has cleared out. So our morning commute started off quiet, but uh, things pricked up pretty quickly. And of course, we will see more of those closures ramp back up. Another full weekend closure is expected over on the city's east side, and this time we will see the I-10 and Loop 410 interchange fully closed. Now remember this starts tonight and will wrap at five in the morning, but those closures will remain in place through Monday morning. So it's a lot uh, that you can expect out there. But remember, this is a $100 million investment to improve the quality of the congestion out there, I should say, and also uh, just help with safety. So just pack some patience if you have to travel through that area. If you scan this QR code, we have a full article that I wrote up early this morning that breaks down the project, what you can expect over the next few years. And yes, I did say years. Uh, so just plan that commute ahead of time. And remember, always good to know before you go, guys. That always gets my attention. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Looked right at you. <laughs> Here's today's night at nine. The search for survivors continues on the Hawaiian island of Maui, where catastrophic wildfires took the lives of more than 50 people and 1,000 people are still missing. President Biden has approved a disaster declaration, sending more than 100 National Guardsmen along with military aircraft to help put out lingering fires and for search and rescue operations. Maui is now working to find 2,000 rooms to house displaced residents. Thousands of migrants in New York City's emergency shelter system have 60 days to find housing. The change in policy comes as the city struggles to house thousands of migrants that have arrived in the city in record numbers since last spring. Mayor Eric Adams says they will work with migrants to help them find other housing options. The change is set to take effect in the coming days. More people died from suicide in the U.S. last year than any other year on record. According to provisional data from the CDC, the suicide rate spiked in 2021 after two years of decline. Rates rose above the previous record from 2018. If you or someone you know needs help, you can call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. The number of new cases of long COVID are on the decline. The CDC says those diagnosed with long COVID 
is down 7.5% from June of 2022 to June of 2023. An estimated 23 million U.S. patients are struggling with the condition. Now, long COVID includes respiratory, neurological, cardiovascular, and other symptoms that can last weeks, months, or years. The FDA says a multi-state listeria outbreak may be connected to real kosher ice cream soft serve on the go cups. So far, two people have been hospitalized. Investigators tested an unopened container of soft serve on the go from one of those patients' freezers, and it tested positive for the bacteria. The ice cream is sold in 19 states. The Writers Guild of America and Hollywood Studios are having a sit-down today to continue negotiations over higher salaries and better residuals from streaming platforms. This writer strike has already outlasted the standoff that took place in 2007 and part of 2008. The longest writer strike so far happened in 1988 when they picketed for 154 days. Could interest rates drop anytime soon? The Labor Department is reporting more than 90% of last month's inflation came from housing costs like rent, insurance, and mortgages. The Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco is seeing slowing numbers in rent and home price indexes on Zillow. Some economists say that could convince the central bank to pause its interest rate hikes or even ease them by next year. This week, Disney has announced its password sharing guidelines. Analysts now predict more streaming services will soon do the same. Netflix says it succeeded in converting those sharing accounts into paying customers, adding nearly 6 million new subscribers in the most recent quarter, three times greater than expectations. Hollywood stars from hit movies and TV shows like Stranger Things, The Mandalorian, and 90210 are coming to San Antonio this fall for the Big Texas Comic Con. The event is set for October 6th through the 8th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. General admission starts at $26, and you can read more about ticket prices and event details at ksap.com. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Any morning headlines, an odd story that ends in tragedy and a new strategy to keep folks from just hanging around a Walgreens. And the company that gets members through security checkpoints at airports faster is having to change methods and your chance to buy a piece of the bird. David Sears is here with your morning headline. A piece of the bird? Are you guys used to that X showed up on your phone? Like, do you get the notifications when you get a tweet? Oh, uh, but it's not a tweet it anymore. It's an my, X or something. Mine's actually, I, I don't know, maybe I haven't updated it. That's probably the case. It's still the bird. My, I still have the bird. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's no good anymore, you know. <laughs> oh, but well. You can have but a she's bird still on the... MySpace, too. So. <laughs> 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 Stop, Justin. AOL. I know, I'm basically it. All right, so let's start with this first. This is tragic and a strange story out of Elgin, just east of Boston on Highway 290. Three adults and a dog found dead in a cistern. Two men and a woman from Florida were hunting hogs on the private property when their dog ran off and then fell into that cistern, which is similar to a well. At first, one man went in to try and save the dog, then another man, and finally the woman. Investigators tell us there was a high level of hydrogen and sulfide gas in the cistern. The three and a dog, apparently overcome by fumes, sank under the water that was about six to eight feet deep. There was a fourth person who was a guide. He was able to call 911. A deputy had to put on a suit and oxygen mask and be lowered into the cistern to retrieve those bodies. If you box stores in Chicago area are trying a new tactic when it comes to keeping people from hanging out outside their store, this Walgreens in Chicago cranking up the classical music outside the store. A 7-Eleven also tried that method. Now, the music is on a loop, so it tends to repeat over and over and over. And you can't get enough of Bach and the William Tell Overture, can you? In some cases, it is working. No hard research to prove it either way, other than a couple of stores that play the music don't have anyone hanging around during the day. Some folks not sure the Chicago Coalition doesn't like it. However, at least one 63-year-old homeless man kind of likes the idea. I don't know how that, I don't know how that does that. I mean, I think it's an interesting idea. I'd like to understand what the science is behind it. Somebody's figured this out. Some 7-Elevens in the Chicago area are doing the same thing, except their preferred genre is opera. You have probably seen the company clear at the airport security areas, pay a fee, use their service to get right past security lines. However, things got a little cloudy. The TSA sent a letter to the company wanting a number of their customers to go through additional vetting. 
According to the Washington Post, the TSA lowering the number of customers who get additional screening after requiring all their travelers to get additional screening. The initial decision was made after a security breach at two airports involving clear passengers. All right, if you wanted some memorabilia, here you go, Steph. From the old Twitter, here is a chance. Elon Musk is having what you consider a big garage sale of some of the old Twitter items now that Twitter is X. There is a reconstructed barn and bird cage with the old logo. There's also stuff like the paintings that depict Ellen DeGeneres' 2014 Oscar selfie and former President Barack Obama celebrating his reelection. You can get some office equipment, includes refrigerators. There are like 584 items. The bidding starts at 25 bucks each. The grab starts next month in Chicago. So he's getting rid of all that stuff that reminds him of Twitter. Hmm. So he can go X, I guess. That's what he's doing. Right. So, you know. But it's not a going out of business sale. It's just... It's not. It's, yeah. just it's getting a fire ready. sale on old stuff. On old stuff. So go get you a, a bird. Yeah. Well, I have one on my phone. So well, I, I can't believe it's still there. <laughs> I know. got to update that thing. It's, yeah, it's probably because I haven't updated. I'm, I'm really bad about She's stuff like that. She's resisting all updates, David. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. See you in a bit. The 2023-2024 school year is in session, and KSAT is helping students prepare return to the classroom. So we hosted a town hall event to talk about many concerns that parents, school staff, and students have going into the new year. One of those concerns, having the added pressure of social media and how that affects students. Victor Hernandez, a student at Cast STEM High School, talks about how social media is impacting teens' mental health. We see this perfect image of what we want, but we know we can't have because we either don't have the looks, we don't have the money, we don't have the personality. And so that's all social media is throwing at us. It's what we want, want, want. And so we always try to achieve for something that's probably out of our range. So we talked about everything from school safety to using self-care to help students perform better in the classroom. If you'd like to hear more about all these topics, you can watch the town hall live stream right now on our website at ksat.com. And the time now is 9:10 and 83 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Geekdom continues to bring entrepreneurs together through events like this one. We tell you about a weekend boot camp filled with workshops and networking opportunities next. The bed is giving locals an opportunity to build their entrepreneurial skills and provides networking opportunities. Tiffany Huetas is live from Geekdom, a collaborative working space downtown that's taking its startup boot camp on the road. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning and happy Friday. Geekdom hosts several events here at the event center that we showed you before the break, but they're taking this boot camp on the road. And this morning we have Matthew with Geekdom. Good morning, Matthew. Hi, good morning. So Thanks much for excitement me. for this weekend's event. Tell us a little bit more about what people can expect and where it's going to be. Sure, absolutely. So we have a startup boot camp program this weekend happening at Our Lady of the Lake University. Uh, this is a weekend to help aspiring entrepreneurs turn their ideas into reality. Uh, so through mentorship, workshops, we help aspiring entrepreneurs get one step closer to launching their business. Tell me about the schedule. What are you really going to dive deep into? Sure. So tonight's all about setting the expectation for the weekend, getting everybody comfortable. Uh, and over the course of Saturday and Sunday, they're working on workshops, mentorship. And, um, they're pretty much there at the event all day on Saturday and Sunday. And it all wraps up with a weekend uh, um, focused on mentorship at the end of it. So they get to pitch, put a pitch together for their business uh, in front of a group of mentors. What should people bring with them? Bring themselves, bring the excitement, the energy. It's a long weekend and we're super appreciative of the people that attend uh, and, and come the whole weekend to focus on their ideas. Uh, and also a, a computer to help put together that pitch deck and the link canvas that we asked for the weekend. And just, hearing testimonials from other entrepreneurs. We see the impact it's having in our community. Tell me about that. Sure, yeah. So we launched this program in the beginning of the year and we've had close to probably over 75 entrepreneurs that have completed and been a part of this program. And for us here at Geekdom, it, it kickstarts their entrepreneurial journey, but it also starts their journey here for us at Geekdom. We have other programming. Uh, Bear County has come in to support us with this program. They have other programming as well to help entrepreneurs. So this is just a start with plenty of more resources to, to help their businesses. Amazing. So much excitement for this event this weekend. We're going to have those details on where you can sign up and more about it on KSAT.com. We'll send it back to you. I look forward to it. Thank you, Tiffany.
Justin joins us now. Uh, you were talking a little bit about El Nino yesterday, day yep. before yesterday. Yeah, forecasters came out yesterday. Now uh, they're saying there's a 95% chance of El Nino by winter. Wow. And this gives us reason to be optimistic. I know it's hard right now with what's going on, yeah. but we're feeling good about what's ahead of us. And let me show you some of the stats. So forecasters, yes, are calling for that 95% chance of El Nino by December through February. And of course, that's a shift with the warming of the waters in the Pacific, and we know that it can have an effect on us here. And in fact, forecasters are growing more confident in it being a strong El Nino event, meaning some of the uh, uh, some of the patterns you'll see maybe are more pronounced. And as we look at the numbers here, we we look uh, at past events. We'll take you back to some of these recent strong El Nino years. 1997, 1998, 2014, 2015, 2016, just some of the years there, which we had a, a strong El Nino. Look at the yearly rainfall, 33.92, 42 inches in 1998. Of course, a lot of that came in one flood event, uh, 2014, 28 inches, 2015, 44 inches. You look back at last year, we had 11.51 inches for the year. So you see the difference that El Nino can make. Now, is this a guarantee? No. But again, we're optimistic about what's ahead of us. We got to get through the summer first, though. El Nino typically has its greatest effects during the fall and winter time. So in the summer, you typically don't see it. Uh, hopefully, things will get better. And I, again, we're feeling better about it. Here's the fire danger for today, and it's still there in a very big way. San Antonio north, you start to run into some very high or extreme fire conditions. So what this means is, if a fire were to get started, it would spread very quickly. We, we're going to get some gusty winds. Of course, we know the dry conditions are there. So it's another day, another day of fire danger, and another day in which we could see some record highs. There are red flag warnings, in effect, for most of the area, and that uh, just means that the fire danger is indeed high, stretching from Gonzales, Pleasanton, and Northwest, uh, including San Antonio. Relative humidity today does drop off pretty significantly by the afternoon. Now, we're not quite into the fire danger level there, but that's low enough to where it can cause some issues again if uh, fires were to get started. Right now, we've got uh, partly cloudy skies at 83 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 74, still high with southerly winds at 10. Heat index is at 89. Morning cloud deck, yeah, we haven't seen a lot of it here in San Antonio. It's mostly been out west today. Uvalde, Hondo, Del Rio, still cloudy there. These clouds, like they typically do this time of year, will go away rather quickly. Give it another hour or so. 86 in New Braunfels, 79 Kerrville, 85 right now in Catula. We're in the low to mid 80s here around San Antonio. Case had 12 hour forecast, 92 noontime. We'll take it up to 106 again this afternoon. That would be another record, or at least tie a record for this date. And uh, it's slow to cool down. Even by 8 o'clock, we've still got temperatures in the triple digits. We've seen this almost every day this week. What's ahead? Uh, in the short term, at least, we've got high pressure still over top of us. It's still hot. It's still dry. The only small, small change I've added to the forecast is on Tuesday. A very weak front tries to work in to central Texas. Could that touch off a shower or two north of us? Possible. Not likely, but possible. So I put in a 10% chance on Tuesday. Otherwise, it does continued heat. Temperatures around 105 each and every day. Guys. Wow. Well, hey, well, I don't know. 104? <laughs> I know. It's weird to think that that's, uh, right. that's an improvement, but that's where we are. If you look up the phrase grasping at straws online or in the dictionary, that's an image of us uh, <laughs> dealing with these yes. forecasts. Hoping. Absolutely. And, Hoping. You, and yeah. you too, you're not excluded. You're okay. included. Yes, yeah. we're all there yes. doing that. Yes. 920, 83 degrees. Now we see mascots around schools, pep rallies, football games, and so much more. But what about who actually makes the mascot come to life? Well, next, SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky takes us behind the scenes of a San Antonian mascot maker. When I first started working here, it was like, yeah, this is a job to have. It's creative. I can work with my hands. Yes. Becky Wilburn may have one of the coolest jobs in town. She's a mascot maker. Actually, I never saw a day in my life. Like I said, 24 years ago, I walked into the shop looking for a job, and my job was to wash clothes and set them upstairs and put them away, all the costumes. And I, one day I came down, and hey, I had nothing to do, and they go, well, I'm doing a church's chicken. 
can you do the eyes? So I was showing, you know, Miss Moore was showing me how to do the eyes and everything. I was, uh, and I took off from there. This storage room is full of Becky's creations, each character made by hand. Much of her work includes local mascots that we've all become very familiar with. The most difficult mascot I have made was doing my first muscle suit. We did Robinson, um, I don't know if it's an elementary or middle school, but it was a rocket. That thing was, whew. I never made a muscle suit before, but I did it. Guess what else she did? Becky helped make one of the most iconic mascots in the Alamo City, the Spurs Coyote. I've seen the coyote and I've seen friends on Facebook with the coyote goes, I wonder if they know I made that thing, you know, but nobody knows who makes the coyote. Now they do. And while Becky has been here over 20 years, she now has a team of mascot makers. It was just me back then. I didn't have people that are as creative as Marshall and Chandler in the back. And with them, nothing's impossible with us. We are making stuff that I never made before. I love to build creatures. I love to build mascots. And I think that's why I'm still here. Does it feel like work? No. It's very clear Becky loves her job, but does she realize that her team is creating much more than just costumes? Mascots are mascots for me, and when they come in and they scream because they've seen the, the mascot that they want, there it is right there. That's worth all the wages of raise or anything. It's watching people come in and have that smile and say, that's what we want. So the next time you see a mascot at a school, college, or a Spurs game, remember Becky, Chandler, and Marshall here at Starline Costumes. You know how many times they ask me, what do you do? He goes, well, I make custom mascots for businesses and schools. A what? Yeah. A mascot. You know what a mascot is? They look at me with mm -hmm. Spurs Coyote. Oh, yeah, yeah, now we know what it's like. These are the best tools ever. And over the years, you can see behind me, I can prove it. For Case at 12, we're shooting for the stars here. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. Great story. Thanks, Jen. 926, 83 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Still ahead, back to school shopping can be costly, especially when it comes to buying clothing. Thrifting might be an option to stay on the less expensive side. We're going to see how much $25 will get you at a thrift shop. Welcome back. It's 9.30, about 9.30. It's a big weekend for three members of the Spurs organization. Tony Parker, Greg Popovich, and Becky Hammond, all three going into the Basketball Hall of Fame this weekend up in Springfield, Massachusetts. And once again, our David Sears is here. Special weekend for these folks. Tony Parker, Coach Pop, Becky Hammond joining George Gervin, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and Manu Ginobili. And Paul Gasol also going into the Hall of Fame, although he was not a lifer with the Spurs, we'll still claim him. Dwayne Wade and Dirk Nowitzki also being inducted this weekend. Now, Tony's gonna to be presented by Manu and Tim, as you would expect. Pop is gonna be presented by David, Tim, Anu, and Tony. Tony has to be presented first before he can present Pop. So oh, I think that's why he's going in front, of, in front of Pop. And then Becky Hammond is gonna be presented by Cheryl Swoops and Teresa Weatherspoon. Of course, you recognize the name Cheryl Swoops because she's from Texas Tech, won a basketball national championship with the Red Raiders. So she gets nice. to be presenting Becky Hammond. And of course, Becky, assistant coach, made a lot of history here in San Antonio with the Spurs organization. And we heard from Tony and Pop yesterday while they were in Massachusetts. To share that, you know, with Coach Pop and Becky Hammond, uh, we're pretty good friends with Becky. She's like my big sister. Uh, it's pretty amazing that we're going into the Hall of Fame all three together. So uh, I'm really looking forward for that experience. It's pretty humbling. Uh, it's fun to go in with them, but still humbling. In the sense it's not something you think about while you're growing up, while you're in the business, that's, that's not in your head. And, you know, when people would say Hall of Fame, you know, to me, that always and still does means uh, Red Holtzman, uh, Red Auerbach, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. To me, that's Hall of Fame. A couple of quick observations. Way back when I first started covering the Spurs back in the 80s, 
in the 90s, everybody, oh, you're just a small market team. The Spurs aren't going to go anywhere. It's either going to be Boston or L.A. or New York or Philly, always winning championships. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think is so remarkable about these three going into the Hall of Fame to go along with Gervin and, and David and, and Tim and Manu is the fact that they were always criticized for being a small market team, never going to win anything. Well, they've got five championships. Yeah. They've been to six NBA Finals. And now they have all these people going into the Basketball Hall of Fame. So that says something about the organization. It doesn't really matter what size market you are. It's it's the culture of your organization and the talent that you can bring in from the administration all the way down to, to the guys who are taking care of the uniforms. Amen. I mean, and we would be celebrating any one of these, but to yes. have three yes. go the in three. the hall same weekend. That's outstanding. It's and I know, and I know you, you both are just are just huge Spur fans. We are, of course. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I'm exci I'm excited too. I guess for the you know for the new season to come as well. I mean, us you know the Spurs fans are getting excited once again. Yeah. Yep, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. So and then and Pop going in and <laughs> I tried to, I I did a rough estimate over the 22 year span that the Spurs straight through the playoffs all right. 22 of those years. Yeah. My guess, my best estimate is. I covered somewhere between 1,100 and 1,200 games from tip to post. Wow. That's a lot of getting yelled at by Pop. <laughs> how, how, no, how many times were you yelled at? I, I, <laughs> uh, once or twice. One, oh. every, every now and then, Pop would let me have it. But, but to imagine that, that I got to be a part of all that. That's and then, so cool. And then to watch these, uh, watch these guys, all these players, and, and including Becky, who was a big part of, of some of that run. Help me remember, during Wimby Mania as it was starting, didn't you run into Pop and – you had a brief interaction? Yeah. He, off camera? Great guy. A lot of fun. <laughs> on camera? Depends on what question you ask. Uh, <laughs> was he basically like, where you been? Yeah. Something like that? Where, okay. where you been? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, hang it up. No, it, 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 and that's what's, that's what's been so fun. I mean, it's been an incredible run. Yeah for them and to cover them all these years yeah. mm -hmm. and to go in that locker room after wins and losses and, right. and, wow. and some of the stuff you hear. But to be a part of being able to cover them in this city that was never supposed to be, yeah. you know, any more than a, an average basketball team yeah. somewhere, you know, and then all these years. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, Super I know cool. that's been a personal and professional yeah. pleasure for you, yeah, David. It's been great. Yeah. What a run. Awesome. What I an honor. That, huh? yeah. Well, yeah. this is, I'm with Steph. This is a great primer for the season coming no, up. Yes. We're all I'm telling you. Psyched up, right? We can do this all over again. Absolutely. Yes, we can. Another 22 years. Sounds straight. good. Let's, Let's do it. Sounds good. We'll probably be here, right? Uh, <laughs> Some of us. Uh, Maybe not. Dave, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Looking out there with live cam. Ah, the sun's out. Uh, we were <laughs> We were protected by clouds earlier when I stepped out. It almost scared me just uh, looking like at look it. Look away. Look yeah. Away. Uh, blue skies already showing up. Yeah, the clouds are breaking up here around San Antonio. We still have a few clouds out west, but they're not going to last much longer. Uh, probably comes as no surprise to you. There are excessive heat warnings, heat advisories in place today across basically the entire state of Texas. We showed you earlier that just about everyone is going to be in the triple digits today. So let me lay out the forecast for you. Noontime 92. We're up around 106 this afternoon, tying yet another record. We would go eight days in a row if we do get to 106. That is an incredible stat. 102 at 8 p.m. still. And it is another one of those days where we've got to conserve energy. It's a CPS Energy yellow day with the, between 3 and 8 p.m. There are some things you can do there to help conserve. And uh, the Texas Energy Grid, as we go forward, I'm afraid it's going to get more and more taxed with the uh, the numbers that we have ahead. Uh, we'll talk more about that forecast, plus the tropics, where we are there. We're starting to head into uh, more of the peak of the hurricane season. Where do we stand there? We'll have that in just a couple of minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. This morning, several San Antonio lawmakers are calling on the U.S. Postal Service to bring back bottled water for letter carriers. Now it comes just weeks after a USPS employee in Dallas died on the job as the heat index hit 115 degrees. Now since the end of the COVID, COVID era public health emergency, the US Postal Service stopped giving its workers free water bottles. At the moment, it's only offering workers access to water fountains. However, some believe it is not enough problem with that is, is they haven't maintained the drinking fountains the way they're supposed to be. They actually on my station, Adobe Station off of East Houston, we don't have a, a water fountain working. Uh, in a statement sent to KSET, the U.S. Postal Service says potable water is available to employees. They declined to comment about accusations of a lack of maintenance of water fountains. 
The hot temperature is not just impacting people, it's also negatively impacting sea turtles. ABC's Ginger Z explains why the heat is making it difficult for those animals to reproduce. Sea turtles, the gentle gliders of our oceans, could be facing a population collapse because of warming water. The gender of turtle offspring is influenced by the temperature of the eggs in a nest. Warmer temperatures means more female baby turtles. And fewer males mean fewer chances of successful reproduction. We've been monitoring this since about 2002, 2003, and we're seeing more 100% female years or 95 or 98% female years. And if the nesting environment gets too hot, turtles don't hatch at all. Another huge challenge for our turtle friends, coastal erosion. It is eating away at the beaches that they use to nest. And then there's the plastic pollution, the amount doubling every six years. Our ocean and shorelines plagued with plastic where turtles should be nesting. We go out every day and clean it. I mean, literally, this this will happen in two days. Despite these threats, folks in the Florida Keys will keep fighting for the sea turtle. Everybody's got to do their part to take care of global warming. And for those that don't believe it, all you got to do is go for a walk on the beach like this, and you'll see it right in your face. For this Climate Minute, I'm Ginger Z. Lots of parents have been worrying about kids vaping in schools. School districts across the state say it's a problem. Next month, a new state law that imposes harsher punishments on students caught with vaping pens or devices goes into effect. RJ Marcus explains what parents and students need to know. Vape pens, nicotine, and uh, THC. So yes, it's grown leaps and bounds. Northside ISD Police Chief Charlie Carnes says he's seen a dramatic increase in the number of students caught with vape pens. We've gone from uh, approximately 40 cases a month to well over 200 cases a month. That increase at Northside is just over a two-year span. Carnes says at the end of last semester, the district had 300 cases in May alone. Northeast ISD had a combined 1,299 cases of THC and nicotine last year. SAISD did not respond in time for this story. It's harder to, to detect. Uh, and then just the basic of, of, of uh, not knowing, not knowing the consequences. The consequences for having a vape pen or e-cigarettes on or near campus are about to change. State lawmakers passed House Bill 114 to address the problem. Parents come to us uh, that they found and maybe uh, in their home, in their child's backpack, in a friend's backpack, vape pens, and they don't have a clue what it is. So starting in September, any student that's caught with one of these types of devices, a vaping pen, will be mandatorily placed in alternative education. Now this bill includes anyone that's caught selling or under the influence of these types of vaping pens within 300 feet of school property. The bill also covers any school sanctioned events like football games. Carnes hopes that parents and students take the new policy seriously. It's a felony uh, for THC. Vaping THC is a felony. Uh, and again, the new laws uh, uh, of administrative discipline, uh, it's, it's heavy. And, and parents need to know, students need to know what they're up against. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. So just a quick note, we had David Sears on here mm -hmm. earlier. He's actually going to be live, live streaming with Larry Ramirez, who is covering the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's going to be on KSAT News Now, which is at 10 o'clock streaming. That's right. Check it out uh, wherever you stream KSAT products. Right now, 940, 84 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And Eastside coming together to give back. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. How you can participate in the 20th annual Gospel Vision Back to School Bash. For 20 years, the East Side has come together to give back. And this Saturday, right here at the Barbara Jordan Community Center, the annual Gospel Vision Back to School Bash will do just that. Uh, Reverend James Robinson is hosting the event. He says, first come, first serve, free school supplies, backpacks, food from the food bank, free tablets, and live entertainment. It's a community deal, but it's like a family deal. Uh, we've done this 20 years, we even did Christmas, Thanksgiving, and uh, we just want to be a blessing and uh, we're going to be a blessing families. Robinson also says barbers will be on site to do free braids and free haircuts for students to make sure they feel confident as they start the school year. Again, the event is this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. First come, first serve. Robinson also says there'll be a handful of professional NFL players on site to do free autographs. From the east side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. As kids head back to school, parents are adding up the cost. Now, one way to save big on clothing is thrifting. 
12 on your sides, Marilyn Words got some help with an assignment. See what you can find for $25. From here, here, it's thrifted. Jylan is a thriftinista, curating her first class look on a secondhand budget. I mean, you can find really cool pieces. She's shopping Goodwill. So is Gloria Villanueva, and she's shopping for four kids. And what grade are you going to be in? Kinder. Kinder. You can find things for $1, $2. Instead of going to the store, they will be $10 for just a shirt. The retail industry estimates the average family will spend 357 bucks just on clothing for back to school. So challenge time. We wondered what you could get for back to school clothing for just 25 bucks. Yes, I like that one. We enlisted seventh grader Emma Peterson. So you feeling confident about that? What do you think you'll be able to find? Uh, I think I'll be able to find lots of shirts. And she's off. For many families, inflation is squeezing the back to school budget. So Friday through Sunday is a good time to save. Texans pay no sales tax on most clothing and Goodwill is cutting clothing prices in half. So of course I had to do a little shopping. I picked up t-shirts, shorts, jeans, blouses, all of this 20 bucks. And when it's half price, just 10. Rummaging the racks can be overwhelming. So what's the key? I think the key to finding things at a Goodwill is to come with an open mind and then to take your time as well. Time to check on Emma. One, two, three, four, five shirts. Plus a Sherpa pullover all within budget. A little lesson in savings before school even starts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Do the flamingos know it's tax-free weekend? Um, they're getting ready for it, Mark, right <laughs> okay. now. Fair, fair. Live they look at be prepping. Flamingo yes. Cam at the San Antonio Zoo. <laughs> Always a great day to go to the zoo. Earlier the better, obviously. Yeah. yeah. They also know that you can do online shopping, so maybe mm -hmm. they're not going to go too far. Very possible. All right, so what's our shopping forecast this weekend, Justin? Uh, hot. <laughs> yeah, hot. More, more heat. Uh, it just it feels like it's not going to end. It will. As we said earlier, there is some reason to be optimistic about what's ahead. I do want to check in on the tropics, too, because the uh, NOAA put out their forecast yesterday for the hurricane season, and they upped their forecast. Now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of these hurricane and tropical forecasts because uh, there's just so many variables at play. What we do know is that the waters are very warm, so that would make you think we would have a busier than normal tropical season. But we're starting to see El Nino kick in, which tends to kind of depress our tropical season. Uh, either way, we're not seeing a lot right now. Things are pretty quiet. We've got a couple waves that are making their way across uh, the Atlantic, but nothing that uh, jumps off the page, uh, nothing that uh, Hurricane Center is watching at all right now. And I do want to show you this. Now, this is the dust. We show you this from time to time. Some of that Saharan dust. We're seeing another plume coming off of Africa, and then there's some out over the Atlantic, but none of which is going to make its way towards Texas, at least not in the near term. So we're not going to have to worry about that either. And keep in mind, this is just one more factor that can suppress hurricane activity. The more dust you have out there, the less you're going to see as well. So a lot playing into that. Again, so far we've had four named storms. The next name on the list would be Emily, followed by Franklin and Gert. We'll see what happens. But if you're heading down to the coast this weekend, no issues at all, just hot. 97 Saturday, 96 Sunday, slight chop in the bays. Seas will be about three feet. Winds will be a little bit gusty. Water temperatures have come down too, I might add. It's uh, down to 80 to 85 degrees for the water temperatures, so that's better than it has been. As we go outside for you, just a few clouds now. We had a lot more cloud cover earlier. 83 at the airport. Dew point is at 74. Heat index is 89. That's what it feels like at this hour, and this is what it will uh, be later this afternoon as far as the air temperature goes. 106 in San Antonio. 107 Elmendorf, Forestville 107, Carrizo Springs 109, 103 in Kerrville. Another very hot day, potentially record setting. If we do get to 106, that would tie the record for this date here in San Antonio, making for eight straight days of record setting heat. Uh, satellite picture shows we do have a deck of clouds out near Hondo, Uvalde, and Lakey. That may help with temperatures at least briefly this morning, but we are not seeing those clouds here in San Antonio. As we zoom out some, we still have that pattern of everything working up and over our ridge of high pressure. There are a few showers up across North Texas, but they, uh, they're they staying there. They're not moving south or anything like that. Uh, we do have some storms up around Chicago, Atlanta, seeing some rain, but uh, no big storm system here across the country that's 
uh, raising any eyebrows. Uh, as far as future cast goes, high pressure wobbles around a little bit, but still here. Still does not go away. I think as we get into next week, it does try to move west some, not enough, but some, uh, as an as a area of low pressure works across the Great Lakes. Now, there could be a weak frontal boundary that tries to move into central Texas. There are no indications that it makes it here. I don't think it does, just not enough push. But if we could get that front into central Texas, and maybe it could kick off a shower or two, it's possible we could see a little bit of rain north of San Antonio Tuesday afternoon. Not a great chance, honestly. Uh, we are splitting hairs here because uh, there's just not much to it. 105 Saturday, 105 Sunday, 104 Monday. There's that very, very small chance. Tuesday. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> are you okay? I'm fine. I'm Tripped fine. on the set. Uh, this is. Uh, Which is not a new set. Uh, I don't know what. I, usually, I can You were so focused that. on what on you were saying. I was looking at the screen. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. Okay. Thank, thank goodness it's the weekend. <laughs> yes, okay. thank goodness. Take a break. You made it to Friday. Yes. You made it. Yes, good job. <laughs> 951, 85 degrees. And before we head to break, today is the beginning of tax-free weekend. So shoppers can save on school supplies and most clothing, shoes, and backpacks under $100. But there are some exceptions. Jewelry and purses do not qualify. We have a link to the full list of all the eligible items right now on our website at kset.com. We'll be right back. Back to Transguide, and we still have that mobile home that's not exactly mobile right now sitting out there. <laughs> it looks like the door's open. See Mark. that the door on the left yeah. side? Yeah, they're starting their day. Yeah, they are. But Good it's morning. been there all morning long, not affecting the, uh, the access road there at all at uh, 410 at Old Pearsall. We have some stalls. Three I want to tell you about. Eastbound okay. 90 at Couples, mm -hmm. northbound 37 at Hackberry, and 35 south at San Pedro here, closer to the downtown area. Oh, yeah, that can get pretty busy, so watch out for those. And as we look at the seven day forecast, uh, you probably know uh, what this entails, but uh, 106 Friday, 105 over the weekend. Fire danger continues. We got to keep mentioning that because any fire that develops can spread very quickly. And I did put in a 10% chance on Tuesday, but don't get too excited about that uh, because I think if we see anything at all, it's probably going to be North San Antonio. Otherwise, it's just hot. Don't forget, coming at about five minutes on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, everywhere we stream. Uh, special uh, on the NBA Hall of Fame weekend. Our team here in San Antonio yes. talking to Larry Ramirez up at the NBA Hall of Fame. Yeah, he gets to cover cover it all uh, for, you know, the, our three, well, I would say our three favorite people. We like all the Spurs, yeah. but yeah, Tony Parker, you know, so that's awesome. And then Greg, and then of course, Becky. Yep. So it'll be good to Coach see that. Pop, uh, Coach Pop uh, was fond of saying this week, he goes, I'm not a Hall of Fame guy. You are yes. now. But yes, <laughs> he will you be yeah. this weekend. So we can't wait to see more. Yeah, congrats to the Spurs and uh, enjoy the weekend. And for those of you who start school next week, uh, you know, really enjoy this weekend. Yes, we will see you here bright and early Monday morning. Have a great weekend.